Hey everybody, Dr. Rick here. Uh, leaving the office has been one of those days, kind of weird. Started off uh, a little later than usual. But um, I, it's weird, the lights in the parking lot went off. I wanted the whole building lights off. Anyway, um, Uh, I wanted to stop by and talk to you about something that uh, is prevalent to me because of, you know, sort, some sort of connections which I'll make uh, as I talk about it. But before I do, I want to remind you that we are still asking for support uh, with our fundraiser. The link is in the description box. Show some love. I'm not gonna get off in that uh, deep off in that today. I just want to talk about something. I hope that you really pay attention here because this is huge. Um, we talk a lot. Uh, we've heard uh, Dr. Boris Watkins speak on it. We've heard Dr. Claude Anderson talk about it. We've heard uh, Jay Morrison talk about it. We've heard a lot of people who have sort of hung their hat in the area of economics within. The black perspective. I've been a little bit more broader in my approach of dealing with things. I've definitely talked about it, written about it, spoke on it. Uh, and while I have, uh, I mean, a pretty extensive his history in entrepreneurship and in finance, that's not where I've chosen to hang my hat. I think there's some people out there doing that. Uh, it's their thing. It's their love. Uh, you know, I teach people uh, entrepreneurial and basic finance and economics in the programs that I offer and stuff like that, but that's not been where I aim my hat. But what I've got to talk to you about today is definitely going to impact the black community in the way of economics. It's going to be immensely important that we understand how and that we rapidly develop actionables to counter this. Um, for a long time, I spent a lot of time in the real estate community as an investor and property owner and a bunch of other things. Uh, one of the things I used to do is I used to do international relocation. I did, uh, I handled the expatriation and the repatriation of high level executives for companies like Enron. I brought all of their uh, employees back when Enron crashed. Uh, Nortel, EDS out of Dallas, uh, Unical out of Houston, Dresser Industries out of Houston, Flora Daniels, and some others. I repatriated and expatriated their high-level execs. If you know what that mean, mean, if you don't know what that means, that means I took the high-level execs who were going overseas to work jobs for long periods. Uh, I took care of everything that had to do with that, from getting their <coughs> visas and passports to making sure that <coughs> household goods were packed, stored, and shipped uh, for home finding expeditions, uh, consultations, and everything. <coughs> well, anyway, one of the things I got that I benefited from that is these high-level execs, when they were repatriated uh, to the Houston area, surrounding areas, were going to need homes that the company was going to expense. <coughs> A lot of those homes were mine. And I'll just leave it at that. Well, what I can tell you is, with my understanding of the market, there's something that's happening right now that should be very concerned, uh, that should have the general population very concerned. A lot of you have heard about the Great Reset. You may not know what the Great Reset is, but you should definitely look it up and read up on it and familiarize yourself with it. Well, there are a lot of ways that this is happening. It's called... <coughs> The Great Reset, but what it is, it's a redistribution of wealth. Now, it's not a redistribution of wealth in the way that most people would think it would be a good idea, like taking wealth <clears throat> from the wealthy and distributing it to uh, the middle class and the poor. <clears throat> it's the exact opposite. It is the interruption of the acquisition of wealth and upward mobility from the lower middle class and the poor and then redistributed it amongst the most powerful. And let me show you how this is happening in the real estate industry. <clears throat> 
some of the the, uh, the biggest banks and the most heaviest hitters and asset management companies in the world are <clears throat> acquiring uh, at an alarming rate what we would normally call starter homes or low end or low income homes. These are homes under two thousand, maybe two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, depending on where you live in Texas. Uh, once upon a time, you could get a pretty nice home for two fifty, uh, probably close to twenty five hundred square feet or more. Uh, that's not the case anymore. Uh, but and a lot of that's due to inventory. There's a shortage of inventory right now, so the prices are going up. This is definitely a seller's market. But <clears throat> here's the thing: these companies are going in. There is actually a couple of develop new new house developments. One of them had 124 homes. Uh, investors came in and bought every home. Why should we be concerned about this? Because these low-end homes are normally first-time buyer homes. These are uh, uh, low-end starter homes, so to speak. These are the homes that new couples uh, get into to buy their first property. And then when they, as they pay on this property, they build what's called equity. So every time you pay on it, you're playing part interest, part principal. The beautiful things about the way most home loans are set up is anything you pay over the additional, um, anything you pay additional over the mortgage uh, set up monthly amount is completely principal. So you can actually pay down your principal rather quickly if you have the income to do so. <clears throat> well, as you pay on it, you build what's called equity, meaning that you actually have some ownership in the home. When you first buy the home, the bank owns the home. Whoever financed the home owns the home. And the only equity you have in it is the down payment that you put on the home, whatever that is. But as you pay on it, that equity builds. And if you were to get a home, uh, you know, if you get your uh, home refinanced or a home improvement loan or whatever, it will be done off of the equity in the home. Well, <clears throat> Over time, as you build that equity, that's your money in that home. Um, if you were to sell that home, you would get, uh, minus closing costs and some other things, you would get whatever equity you have in the home, you would get that. And that's a way a lot of people can refinance or restart or, re or finance a business or a bunch of other things. It's a way of building wealth and facilitating upward mobility. Well, what happens is when you buy up everything that's priced under $300,000 and you turn them into single family uh, households, what are known as FH, SFHs, single family houses, uh, single family homes, what happened that are being rented, what, you, what happens is you turn an entire socioeconomic class into permanent renters. Unless they move out of the economic class to afford a, a home that is not owned by an investor and being leased, they're forced to rent, even if they're renting a house. So ultimately, they're going to be complete communities that are going to be nothing more than single, single uh, erected uh, apartment complexes, basically, because everybody's renting. And... That creates a number of different issues in the sense of socioeconomic environment. Outside of making a major uh, dent in the ability of people to build wealth because historically buying a home, even though it hasn't been the same for blacks as it has been for whites, still historically buying a home is a way to build equity over time. You're gonna, pay, no matter where you go you go and live, you're gonna pay to live there. Well, when you buy a home, you're investing in yourself because as you pay down the interest, you're also paying down the principal. And when you pay down the principal, that part now becomes your part ownership in the home. You are now sharing ownership with the bank until you completely pay it off. Well. That never happens when you're renting. You're renting, you are literally paying somebody to live in something that they own. They're benefiting from it and you're getting a place over your head. But it will never become a mechanism through which you can build wealth or leverage for uh, funds that you may need for something else, for an emergency. You may have an emergency where there needs to be emergency service, uh, emergency surgery or treatment for cancer or something like that. And you don't have the insurance to cover it. Well, if you've got equity in your home, that may be the way you cover the treatment. Well, that won't be available 
to people who earn probably somewhere around $60,000 to $70,000 or less. Now, we should be, or we as a race should, be def, should definitely be concerned about that because a large part of our population lives at or below the poverty line. So, if we're talking about building wealth, that's going to be a major way that we do it. That's going to be a major way of holding. Now, what do we do? Because this is happening at a very rapid pace. And right now, uh, very few people are sounding the alarms. We are going to have to do a better job of sounding the alarm. We're going to have to do a better job of coming up with strategies. One of the things we're going to have to do is we're going to start buying up these, some of these properties and selling them under uh, extended contracts and, and, and stipulations and uh, also selling them. And then if there are going to be leased properties, we lease them with the option to buy uh, to young couples. In other words, if you're not ready to buy yet, but you may be ready to buy, you lease it until you're ready to buy. And then you can buy the home and we can apply, whatever. It's a bunch of ways that that can be done. Well, the other thing is we're going to have to start developing. We're going to have to start becoming builders. And we are only going to sell to single families. Uh, no investors. We're going to have to get involved in this in order to have an impact. Or we are literally going to have a large part of our population that will always be renting. Even the ones who want to own. First of all, we need to change the mindset of renting. Now, the thing is, there are extremely wealthy people who lease, but they're already wealthy and they already have other, other means and mechanisms through which they are able to, um, where they're able to, uh, you know, uh, support, secure, and uh, use their assets. So that is not a problem for them. Well, when you're trying to build, you need a, a, a leverage arm or a mechanism or something that you can use in order to get that done. And for most people, it is home ownership. Now, again, it doesn't work as good for blacks as it doesn't because normally black homes are undervalued uh, for the purpose of resale value and overvalue for the purpose of tax value. And so we, we, we take a hit both ways, but to have something that's undervalued is better to have nothing at all. And then we have to work to fight to make sure that we are properly valued. And that's simply put, we need to get more blacks to become qualified uh, appraisers because it's these white appraisers that are going out and undervaluing black homes. Um, and it's happening on a pretty large uh, scale. So what, what I'm here to tell you is that we really need, we really need uh, to do a better job of first understanding how the game is played, being able to recognize game when it's happening, being able to recognize when you're under assault and being able to respond. It is immensely important to understand the gravity at, 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 uh, <clears throat> of what's happening right now. Uh, I can't even really, I'm like, I'm just looking at it and I've been talking to my wife about it who happens to be a real estate agent. I've been talking about it with Marion probably for the like last five or six years. And right now it's to the point where she can't even find a home under $300,000 because the moment that it's listed before it's ever even shown, there are multiple offers on the house, all coming from investors paying 30 to 50% over appraised value. You, 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 you're not gonna find a, a family that can afford that. Not at, you know, not if you're trying to buy a $200,000 house, you don't have an extra 40 or $50,000 laying around because you would have to go conventional. You couldn't go FHA. You definitely couldn't use a GI, GI uh, loan uh, from as, for, as a veteran because the stipulations on appraisals and, and how everything is funded will not allow you to pay for uh, over appraised value. So you would have to come out of pocket for everything over the appraised value. So all you have left are investors and they are buying these properties and it's not your small time investors. These are major holders. You know, there are BlackRock for once. BlackRock is like the largest asset 
uh, management uh, company in the world and they are underwriting a bunch of purchases of these properties and they're, they're all for lease back. So what, what does that mean? That means that home will never be sold. It will never be owned by anyone other than a management company who leases it out for profit. And on, I mean, on a low end, and then we also have to look at it like this as well. When you start looking at these major players, you're also cutting out the small investor, the investor that literally is going to use this type of investor to build their portfolio, to grow their wealth that way. That's one of the best ways. Real estate has consistently been the most solid, not the fastest, but the most solid way to develop and hold wealth. And now the big boys are locking out smaller investors and destroying home ownership. And in the process, killing one of the most uh, consistent and trustworthy paths to wealth. That's something that we're gonna have to be aware of. That's something that we're gonna have to pay attention to. I just wanted to bring that to you guys' attention. As I said earlier, we need your support. So show some love when I get off of here. Go to the description box, click that link, and make it happen. On that note, I'm getting out of here. I got a couple things to do before I get home. Take care.